Vicky, I'm from the Species Recovery Trust. This video is about surveying for the tansy beetle on the Bibroos in York. So the tansy beetle is a very rare beetle, it's endangered here in the UK. It's found in two locations, um, here in York on the River Ouse and also down in Cambridgeshire on the wetlands. Uh, it's a very rare beetle, it's mainly found on very specific food plants. Here in York it's found on on the tansy and we've got an example of a tansy clump here. Um, the beetle's about a centimetre long, it's a very distinctive beetle, we've got a nice picture of it here. It's very bright green and it's got um, a slight reddish tinge to it. It's not really like um, many other beetles, particularly here in York, uh, there's only really the dock beetle which is very much smaller than it, so it's quite an easy thing to spot on the river banks. In terms of its threats here in York, the, uh, the tansy often gets grazed by, by cattle or sheep or horses if there's high numbers. It can also be affected by invasive species such as Himalayan balsam. It also uh, is affected by things like willow as well that cause shading. And summer flooding can also affect the beetle when river levels get very high, when the larvae as well as the uh, eggs among the plants then it's very easy for the beetles to be and their eggs and larvae to be washed away. Um, so in terms of uh, conservation of the beetle we actually have a collaboration of organisations that work together which is part of the Tansy Beetle Action Group TBAG and that's a mix of everything from universities to city councils as well as zoos and conservation organisations. Um, and part of the work of TBAG, each year an annual survey is done when people come out on stretches of river like this one and they look at clumps of tansy like this um, and go around measuring the clumps as well as recording their location and the numbers of beetles present. Um, so when you're actually doing the surveying, one thing that's really important is to make sure that your well-being and health and safety is, is all okay. Um, we send out a risk assessment each year to actually explain sort of what you need to think about in terms of your health and well-being. So it's best if you read that and make sure that you have all the right equipment, footwear and stuff for, for weather. Um, one thing to be really aware of is that riverbanks can be very dangerous. Um, you can see here there's a very steep bit of riverbank as well as you can get overhanging. So it's best to keep well back from the edge of the riverbank um, when you're doing your surveying and not try to scramble down to do do survey work. Also what's important is to make sure that you somebody knows where you're going when you're surveying and also ideally surveying with another person. Also we have insurance and we send out details and tell you how what you need to do to make sure that you're covered by that insurance during your survey. In terms of equipment when you're out surveying um, there's kind of a few things we provide you with. There's a series of uh, forms that we provide you with, for example, this uh, survey protocol that gives you information about what you should be recording when you're out on the riverbanks. Also, together with a recording sheet, um, which has another number of columns, um, and I'll be giving more information on the next video on how to actually do the actual recording technique. In addition, it's a good idea to take out a clipboard to help you. Um, when you're recording to make it easier. Uh, also take with you any kind of wet weather gear, good footwear um, and another really important thing is your GPS. Um, so you might already have your own GPS or a phone with a GPS on it but we also provide GPS's so if you need it just let us know and we'll provide you with one um, and these also come with, with batteries but these are really important for recording start and finish of your stretch as well as where all your tansy clumps and beetles are located. Um, yeah, um, uh, the next video will give you more information about the survey techniques. Okay.
my name is Vicky, I'm from the Species Recovery Trust and this video is about surveying techniques for the tansy beetle on the river in York. Um, so one thing that's really important when you're surveying for the beetle is to have some good weather. So a nice sunny day is perfect. Uh, it has to be dry and warm otherwise the, the beetles won't be easy to count or see. Um, so for example here we've got a clump where the beetles are out. Um, so in good weather they'll be out on the leaves, also up on the flower heads as well. Um, and Tansy has nice distinctive yellow flower heads which makes it nice and easy to see the beetles. And there's a good picture here of the beetle on the Tansy flower heads which are like yellow buttons and the beetles sit out and sunbathe on the flower heads. Um, so when you're doing your survey work, um, you want to be uh, thinking about the different types of equipment that you might be taking with you. So you want um, good footwear, um, you want um, your survey forms, and we explained that in the earlier video. Um, you also want to think about um, taking your GPS with you. So once you get started, um, you want your survey forms, which have lots of different bits of information that you need to start recording about your stretch. So you want the surveyors that are, re that are working on the stretch, you want the sheet number, your date, uh, you want to record anything about any invasive species that you're finding on the stretch, so Himalayan balsam, giant hogweed, knotweed, um, and there's more about the, that on the survey protocol. Uh, notes on any threats or changes or management on your stretch. So is there anything different from last year or have you noticed anything if you're new to the stretch? You know, is there a, some flooding happening or some, some specific management that's taking place? Maybe something's being built or changed on your stretch. Um, any information about the landowners or managers would be great. Um, and you also want to have your uh, start and finish for your transect. So yeah, so you get provided with some coordinates for your stretch and basically that provides you with your start and finish. So when you find your start, you want to take a GPS to kind of indicate exactly where you started the uh, transect. So uh, you can have your own GPS or we do provide you with a GPS like this one. And we also provide a, a use sheet as well, instructions on how to use this GPS. We can also give you a bit of a training course if you're really not confident on how to use the GPS. Um, but it's really important that you use this for actually recording the start of your transect as well as all the way along with the clumps as well as the finish. Um, when you're using your GPS, it's best to give it time to warm up. So it needs to find satellites, particularly that start um, point is important because it can take a while for the satellites to be located by the GPS so give it a bit of time to warm up before you take that first point. Um, once you've done the very start of your, of your survey you want to find your first tansy clump. So when you're looking for tansy it's got a very distinctive leaf, it's this very kind of feathery fern like leaf and it also has a very distinctive smell. If you pick a bit and push it between your fingers uh, you can smell how aromatic it is and it's got a kind of savoury smell as well. Um, so once you've found it, um, you want to check that it's definitely tansy in terms of the flower heads as well, or it might be that there's other plants nearby and there's a nice kind of sheet that we provide you with on things like cow parsley as well as silverweed and ragwort, how to kind of tell the difference between the two. Um, but once you're confident you have got your tansy plant, then you can start to actually uh, do a location for it. So when you're doing a GPS location for Tansy Clump, you want to try and get in the centre, so try and stop your Tansy. Uh, you want to reach your hand out and take a GPS in the centre, well, as close to the centre as you can get. Um, once you've done that, you'd record GPS on your form, giving it a number, ideally uh, something that's already on here or one that you've specifically inputted uh, then put your references on here or if you're using one of our GPS's we can actually download them for you. Um, once you've taken your GPS you then want to think about the size of your tansy clump, its area. So we've got four different sizes, we've got small, medium, large and very large. In 
terms of small tansy clump, that's only 10 stems. So all you do is you actually uh, count the number of stems and then if there's 10 stems or less, you count that one as a small clump. Um, if it's more than 10 stems or um, about a meter squared or less, then you're actually looking at a medium sized clump. Um, in terms of measuring that, you, I often use my kind of pacing in terms of what, what is roughly a metre long um, to kind of estimate that um, and then look at the stems on the ground as well to kind of see exactly what area they can run. They can flop over which can make it more confusing. Um, in terms of the next stage up, in terms of large, it's actually between a metre squared and two metres squared and then going up from two metres squared um, three meters squared and then with a very large you have three meters squared and over. So um, that's all actually outlined on the sheet so the best thing to do is actually to kind of familiarize yourself with the protocol before you go out and do the recording of the different sizes of the candy plants. In terms of fetal presence um, and absence you're going to obviously have a look at the clump and just see whether you can see any initially. Um, if you've got beetles then it's down as a 1 for presence or if you have no beetles it's a 0 for absence. In terms of recording the number of beetles um, what you have to do is just cho choose a point on your clump and then start to count. Um, so uh, look for the centre and then just count outwards and just keep counting as you go along. So it's quite easy to see the beetles but you've got to kind of make an effort to kind of look in the different kind of areas of the clump. They also occur slightly outside the clumps on different plants so you really have to have a good look and search to kind of make sure that you get all the different um, beetles. Especially if the weather changes they're more likely to kind of hide a bit more within the clump. Um, so you keep doing that round kind of counting your beetles. It might be that you can't get all the way round because there's a river bank in the way um, if that's the case, then you just have to kind of do your best to kind of count the beetles that you can see. Or if you've got short vision, binoculars kind of using those to actually record um, any beetle numbers that way. Um, once you've done that recording one way, you can double back and kind of see if there's any beetles that you've missed to kind of add to your total. Um, and then if you put a whole number down on the form, so it might be you found 10 beetles, or it might be that you found 50 beetles. If you've got a clump that's really, really prolific in beetles, that's got really high numbers, it might be that you feel that you can only do an estimate. So if that's the case, put a whole number estimate down and then just put in the notes that it's an estimate. Um, you do have the option to put any notes down. If you've anything specific about the tansy, it might be that it looks like it's been sprayed, so it's dead or it's been mown to the ground. So you might want to put some additional notes in. Um, once you've done that, then you can move on to your next clump and work slowly along your stretch recording any clumps that you see. It might not be that you always find clumps on directly on the riverbank like this. It might be also that there's clumps like slightly away. So for example here, there's a clump actually out in the field. So um, there is a beetle like just next to this clump on a grass blade. And so we would actually uh, record this clump. I mean we'd record it even if there wasn't a beetle here anyway. Um, it's a good idea to try and record tansy clumps that, that are about 100 meters or less from the riverbank. If they're much further than that um, the kind of usefulness to the beetles becomes a lot less so it's best to kind of stick with, with those clumps that are closer to the riverbank. So once you've kind of worked your way along recording all your different tansy clumps you'll kind of get towards the end of your stretch. Basically then you should record your final um, GPS point which will be your finish point. This will be again similar to the location that's given for your stretch. So it might not be that there's a tansy clump there, a bit like your start, it might just be somewhere kind of near the uh, a gate or the end of the road or whatever it is that's the end of your stretch. But still take that location um, and give it a unique code um, something like 333 three, three, and the same for your start if you can give them a unique code and make sure that they get uh, noted down on your sheet as well as all your club, club records at the same time. Um, 
at the end of your survey you'll end up hopefully if you've had lots of success kind of lots of sheets with information on and then these need to be taken back and inputted online um, in the sheets that we provide to you um, once we've got that you'll send all the sheets back to us and we'll collate all this information um, into a report that we'll then distribute back to the surveyors but also to land managers other conservationists um, which will all be used to protect and secure the towns of Eco for the future okay thank you for listening